Those who work shall play. University of Michigan Rugby Captain William C. Malley, Michigan Daily, Volume 1, Number 1, Monday, September 29th, 1890. You head down with your friends, your new friends, and that's the rugby field, and this is a rugby ball, and these are rugby players, and your shorts are way too long. But you follow and try, and it blurs by, and you think, there's a lot going on here. All of the bodies and skill and fitness and power and decision making, there's always something more, something to learn, something to improve. And they tell you, you just need to come back, just need to work at it. You multiply that work by 15, then the other team is 15, and of course there's the ref to deal with, and the field is bigger than a football field. And then beyond your 15, there's the club, which has more players and more teams than one dewey September night on Mitchell Field. You realize this is some serious shit. This is some serious fun. More than pulling an oar or dropping in for, for hoops at the CCRB because to play here, you must work. So now an elder statesman who just played the A game is tossing you some droopy cotton jersey to play Central's B-side and you know very little beyond basic self-preservation. Let's go, you'll figure it out, he says. And you do figure it out. Through the mess of bodies and unclear rules, you get dirty and sweat and bruise and you yell and curse and bleed and you don't apologize. And you play the way kids play and oh God, what is mom going to think? And you're in the backyard trying, testing, seeing what clicks, playing ball. And the challenge of the other team forces you to improve and think and run and ruck harder, faster, smarter. And your teammates tunnel you off just for playing because the effort itself is a worthy endeavor. And it feels like it. You're still buzzing, but you look for that guy to say thanks for helping you out there. And you realize he had just lost the top game, but he was so excited that you showed up, that you got on the field with him, and he says, no, thank you. And he receives no extra recognition for playing that second game. There's no vanity here, no stars, no status. He works, you work, the team works, the club works, and you play. You play your guts out because now you know rugby has a soul. And with what you just experienced on the field, how could it be topped? The game is peeling layers from you, removing crutches you didn't know you were leaning on. You don't need pads because you've got muscles, and if those fail, your bones usually hold, and at last resort, you've got that thing you can't quite name that keeps you coming back, that wakes you up for lifting and turns your legs for one final scrum. Last play, someone says, but you can't even see. And the only thing that gets through your brain is the question all of this has been asking. Who are you? You know that's what this inquisitive airplane acquaintance is asking as you jam a faded maize and blue kit bag into the overhead. They're saying that's crazy, but they're really asking who are you? What is Michigan rugby? But you couldn't possibly explain it. That you have a job because of rugby? That you go to other countries for rugby? That you only see the doctor for rugby? That you only wear rugby shorts and they feel fantastic? Your house has been dusted by the rugby fairy with a ball here and a decal there and cones and cleats and just the collar, nothing else, just the collar of a torn jersey that you won't throw away because that jersey had an M on it. But you can't explain it to a stranger, so you ease the conversation out with some bromide. Yeah, well, it gets in your blood. But that's the truth. That's where it lives, ardently pumping hot, red, maize, blue. Even when you're beyond the backyard and in the realm of coaching and systems and analysis where the club becomes a program, it's all just a framework for play, for rugby to rise higher, unbounded, because it's a player's, it's a blood. And you peel another layer back and work and sprint and train and rehab and watch film and game plan and you do it better than last week or last year and you do it with your best friends and you do it for Michigan and you do it for an 80th minute try no game plan could fathom. No one knew you could do that, not even yourself. And your teammate dives to score and you howl and your friends howl, and you're tunneled off smiling, but you don't forget there's another game, maybe someone's first. And you remember it, and your friends remember it, and you know the other team tries not to remember it. And you lace them up again, maybe once a year now, for those beautiful, inconceivable moments when the rugby plays forth like jazz. Because who are you? You're a rugby player. You're a Michigan rugby player. And in Michigan, those who work shall play.